Where is that? The ghost of old Hiram Moore. Let's get out of here. Any luck, Brandon? No. Tell the others to meet me at my place. All right, boys. Chief says meet him at his place, Anson. All right, this is a waste of time. Chief says call at night and come to his place. You're staying out? Yeah, and I'll scare the daylights out of any galoot that comes near the place. Men, we can't be wrong. We all know that old Hiram Moore had a lot of money hidden away when he died. And when he hid it, he must have made some sort of map or chart to mark the place. Well, if he did, it ain't in the house. Been over every foot of it, so it's every piece of furniture. The place will be sold at auction in a couple of days. If the price doesn't run too high, we'll bid it in. And then we'll find the fortune that we have to tear the place to pieces. As long as we keep our ghosts riding the range, nobody will bid much for the ranch. I'll not appear at the sale. My foreman will represent me. And remember, whoever buys the place, we split three ways on the treasure. Agreed. That's the best. Here's water, miss. It's mighty precious stuff in the desert. I'll say it is. Thanks. Hey! Hey, I thought you were dying of thirst. I am. But I can last until I get some water in the car camp. I'm sorry. It took the last drop. Do you mind? Not a bit. That happened alone. You must be a stranger around here. There's a good outer road a mile south. Yes, I know about that. I came this way because I didn't want anyone... That's all right, Miss Moore. Don't tell any secrets. Who are you? How do you know my name? Oh, I see. Too bad they don't put them on horses. Um, well, thanks for the water. Goodbye. Good luck. My name's Jerry Lane. I am from up Pecos way. 
I sold my ranch and stock and thought I might buy something in this neighborhood. That's fine. How big a place do you aim to buy? Oh, big enough to run a few hundred head of steers. But it's got to be a bargain. I'm buying for cash. Great. I got just the place for you. Good land, good buildings, and a good price. Hey, Jensen, you going out to the auction? No, I can't be bothered with that sort of thing. Now, this place I was telling you about, Mr. Lane, uh, is... What about the auction? <clears throat> Why, that's old Hiram Moore's place. He died about a year ago, and it's a sheriff's sale to pay off the debts and taxes. What did you say his name was? Moore. You wouldn't be interested. The place is all run down. Say, didn't he have a granddaughter named Jean? I don't know. Well, I'll have a look at it anyway. You better let me show you some real ranch land. Sure, some other time. sale is to pay off the taxes, claims, and debts of the late hire or more. I'm going to sell off the furniture first, and then we'll put up the property. Now, what am I offering for this elegant trap? A genuine Grand Rapids antique. Fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty cents. Now, listen, Colonel, I don't want to have any trouble with you. Now, here's a chair, folks, that anyone might be proud to own. Look at this magnificent piece of furniture. Do you mean to say you offer me 50 cents? Yes, sir. <laughs> 50 cents for this fine piece of furniture. Do I hear a dollar? Sold to the colonel for 50 cents. Get his half dollar, Jim, and I'll bet it's plus. <laughs> well, ladies and gents, there's a painting of the old boy himself, Hiram Moore, one of the real pioneers of this country. Now, what am I offering to them? How much have I bid? You said you searched all that furniture. How about that picture? What do you mean? If old man Moore had a paper to hide, that picture is a mighty likely place. A genuine painting of the old boy himself. How much for this fine painting of this fine gent? How much have I bid? Five dollars. Five dollars? Five dollars. Friends, did you hear that? Five dollars for this magnificent oil painting of this old gentleman. Here's a picture of a cowman that anybody would be proud to hang in his parlor, gentlemen. Five dollars for a masterpiece. I'm offered five dollars, five dollars for this beautiful picture. Now, come on, let's shake it loose, friends. Come on, shake it loose. Let's hear some bids. Five dollars. Going for five dollars once. Going for five... Wait, I'll bid ten dollars on that picture. Ten dollars. Now, there's a little lady that appreciates the beautiful in art. You hear that? I was right. Fifteen dollars. Do I hear twenty? Twenty. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Thirty dollars. Now you're talking, folks, thirty dollars is bid. Do I hear forty? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. The young lady says fifty dollars for this elegant painting. Fifty dollars all done. Sixty dollars. Seventy. One hundred dollars. Hundred and ten. Ten. All done. Going for 110. Going for 110 once. Going for 110 twice. 200. Where in the world did you come from? What are you doing in this, stranger? Why, I thought I'd like to buy the picture. Any objections? $300. 500. Sheriff, this man's making a lot of loose talk. You better find out if you can back it up. That's a fair question, stranger. You mean, can I make good on my bids? Yes. Why, Sheriff, I'm surprised at you. Go on with the sale, Robert. Five hundred dollars. Do I hear six? Do I hear six? Do I hear six? All in? Sold to this gentleman for $500, and not a cent too much. Mister, you've got a fine eye for all. If you're ready to put up the property, I'd like to bid on the ranch and all that goes with it. All right. Folks, what am I bid? For 640 acres of fine grazing land, the house, the contents, and everything that goes with it. Everything on the place. What am I bid? How much is against it? $1,200. Then I'll bid 15. 2,000. 
$2,000. $2,000 for $10,000 worth of property. Can I hear $2,500? $2,500? Don't I hear another bid? No bids. Sold to Mr. Jerry Lane. If you'll get the papers drawn up, I'll come into town tomorrow and close this thing up. That's fine. I'll get somebody to move the furniture back in the house. Thanks. Just a minute, Miss Moore. I guess this is what you came for. But would you mind telling me why you were willing to pay $70 for it? Suppose you tell me why you paid $500 for it. Well, I sort of liked your looks, and you seemed to want the picture, so I... So you thought I looked like the kind of a girl that would let a stranger buy her $500 present? If you don't want it, throw it in the first ditch you come to. Uh, when you get through, come down to the barn. I'll pay you for helping. A very good, sir. Wait a minute. Where'd you come from? Originally from England, sir. A gentleman's gentleman, sir. I see. Why'd you quit? Well, sir, you see, it was a matter of ten pounds that was lost. And uh, they said you stole it? Oh, no, sir. But they said they might have found it if I hadn't helped them look for it. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Lane. Well? I'm sorry I said that. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. I think you were splendid. Forget it. Oh, please, please don't go yet. I want to answer your question about that picture. It's my grandfather. Oh, so that's the answer. You like the old fellow. No, it wasn't that I liked grandfather. I never saw him. Well, then, we won't call it a present. But I'll loan it to you, and you can take it home with you. And I can't take his picture home with me, because I haven't any home. Oh, so that's the answer. Maybe I'd better tell you all about it. That might help, if you feel like confessing. Mother often talked about Grandfather. We wanted him to come and see us, but he just wouldn't leave the ranch. <laughs> the old gentleman with set ideas. Not a thing worth taking. I was grandfather's only heir, but the taxes and penalties on this place were more than I could cover, even though it was worth it. So I just never came to look at it. You think I get stuck with the place? Oh, no. Oh, please, sir, don't shoot again, sir. One shot was quite convincing. I suppose you were going to help me to find my money. Oh, no, sir, this time I was in earnest. You see, I haven't been able to find me a job, and... You've got a job now. Unsaddle my horse and put him in the barn. Then you're not going to jail me, sir? What do you think? Oh, thank you, sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was fine of you to give him another chance. I need help if I'm going to run this place. Oh, uh, you were telling me why you wanted the picture. People thought maybe he buried his money somewhere on the ranch. Sounds reasonable. But I still don't see what this picture has to do with it. Neither do I. You see, I had a notice of this sale and thought I ought to come down here and see if anything could be salvaged. Then when those men started bidding so high, I thought, sure, I ought to get it. Same here. Those three birds know something about Grandpa that you and I ought to find out. I guess you'll have to do that, Mr. Lane. 
You see, when I got the hunch to come down here, I drew out all my savings and gave up my job. You've got a job. Since I'm going to have a gentleman's gentleman, I'd better have a secretary. I'm sorry, Mr. Lane, but I couldn't... Now, don't get me wrong again. You're to go into town now and hire a sort of a combined cook and chaperone. And then what? Then we'll move in here and try and find out why Grandpa's picture's worth so much money. Is it a go, Jean? It's a go, Jerry. I bid for Brandon because I thought that was my cue. Severin had a hunch. I was right. If there's a chart to old man Moore's money, that picture holds the secret. This man Lane, the girl, whoever she is, knows it. Well, if you're too sure about it, why didn't you outbid Lane? Because I know a cheaper way to get that picture. And the ranch, too, if we need it. I'm sure you'll be satisfied with your housekeeper, miss. She worked for us at the hotel. She seems very capable. Uh, where's the sheriff's office? Just a block down the street. Thanks. All fixed. Miss Moore is hard for Dita, her housekeeper. Good. That puts a friend inside the house. Lane's over at the sheriff's office. If he only knew what his game is. I'll find out. Or I'll persuade him to drop it. You know what you're to do. Sure. Come with me. Well, I'm glad that we got a good substantial citizen on the Moore place. Since the old man died, there's been a lot of queer stories about the ranch. What kind of stories? Well, now that I got your check, Lane, I'll tell you. People say that the ranch is haunted. Is that right? Hmm. Haunted? What, what do you mean? Just one of those stories that get around. You see, old Hiram Moore was a miser. No offense to you, Miss Moore. And there's a lot of talk about buried treasure. Some people say that the old man couldn't sleep easy in his grave. I never saw his ghost. I never talked to anybody that did. But it won't do you any harm, except that you may have some trouble getting the boys to work the place. Well, maybe old Hiram Moore will quit haunting when he finds his granddaughter there. Now, Mr. Lane, if you'll just put your John Hancock right there on the bottom line, everything will be all right. Hello, Sheriff. Oh, I, I didn't know you were busy. I'll come back later. No, 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 Don. Come in, come in. I want you to meet some people. This is Miss Moore, granddaughter of old Hiram Moore. Do How do you do? And this is Jerry Lane, who's going to be your neighbor. He just bought the Moore place. Mr. Brandon. Glad to know you, Mr. His Lane. His place borders yours on the south. Well, that's fine. Mighty glad to have a neighbor, Mr. Lane. Maybe with folks living in the Moore house, we'll hear less about old Hiram's ghost riding the rain. What about this ghost, Mr. Brandon? Did you ever see it? Well, I don't believe in ghosts myself. But several of my men claim to have seen it. Men who are generally thought to be reliable but you still don't believe in ghosts. Well, I'll put it this way. I don't remember a man who might walk after death. He's the man. Thanks, Mr. Brandon. Don't forget to be neighborly. You'll see a good deal of me, I expect. Stop in sometime, Sheriff. I will. Well, that's settled. Did you get the chaperone? A half-breed woman. Homely, but she seems capable. <laughs> Why homely? You're not going to start by being jealous, I hope. <laughs> no. <laughs> I took what I could get. The clerk at the hotel found her for me. She'll be at the ranch tonight. Hello, oh, Judy. How about me and you having a drink? Jerry, be careful. That's all I need. Come on, old man. You've had one too many. Better go home and sleep it off. I think I'm drunk, eh? Well, what do you think? Here's what I think. I apologize. You're not drunk.
I'm not looking for trouble, but keep out of my way. Next time, you'll really get hurt. I'm sorry this happened, folks. The man's a stranger here. I hope you won't hold it against the community. Cowboys will get drunk. Sure they will. But he isn't a cowboy, and he wasn't drunk. He's a professional pug if I ever saw one. You want me to prefer charges against this man, Lane? No, just keep him out of my way. Well, you certainly know how to handle him, Lane. Yes, and I'm pretty good on ghosts, too, Mr. Brandon. Parsons. Your gentleman's gentleman seems to have other accomplishments. I'm afraid he's got too many. I beg your pardon, sir. I failed to hear your arrival. I didn't know you were a musician, Eddie. Very kind of you to take notice, miss. I'm a bit out of practice, but I find my fingers retain their nimble touch. I've noticed that. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. I did a bit as a singing waiter in a big London restaurant. It paid rather well. I imagine you make it pay pretty well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Take care of my horse. There'll be more in the morning. More horses, sir? Yes. More horses. Hmm. Well, what do we do now? Your grandfather, the third degree. Maybe what's true? Maybe Grandfather's ghost really does ride the range. He was a strange man from what my mother told me. Never gave up anything that once belonged to him. Maybe he won't give it up even when he's dead. Now listen. Yes, Jerry? When I hired you as a secretary, I thought you were grown up, not a kid. I'm going to be too busy to be sitting up nights telling you bedtime stories. Well, but if there really should be a should ghost... Should be. There unquestionably will be. If Grandfather's ghost comes, I intend to catch him. Perhaps he can tell me about his picture.
Thank you. If the senorita permits, I shall lock my door. Why, of course. But what on earth for? Because of the ghost in this house. I've been afraid. What ghost? The ghost of Senor Moore. At night, he rides sometimes through the ranch, open a great white hole. Me a banshee. What is this? Just a coyote. It always howls when the moon is up. Hey, sing one of your London songs. Right ho. I'm not a ballet snob, you know, far from it. I do the tasks that set for me, of course. But I'm a sentimental man, and I'm working for a gentleman. I ate to be a valet to an horse. <laughs> I ate to be a valet to an horse. It fills my soul with sadness and remorse. How can a faithful servant feel he's being helpful and genteel when he's a ballet valet to an horse? I can't approve the funny-looking creatures, the size and shape and silly equine features. I've been footman, butler, page, but who'd ever thought at my age I'd come to be the valet to an horse? I'm not a barley snob, you know, far from it. I do the tasks that set for me, of course. But I'm a sentimental man, and I'm working for a gentleman. I ate to be a valet to an old. <laughs> Not yet, but it will be if it comes in within range. Well, better luck next time. Beg your pardon, sir, but I think it's a bit of luck that he did, didn't stop. <laughs> All this hocus pocus is intended to scare us off. Who's ever doing it knows something about that picture that we don't know. It's gone! Lord, blind me if it ain't. Perdita! Pretty 
Perdita! Perdita, open the door. Si, senor. A moment, please. What is that, senor? Santo Dios, you are frightening me. What is that you seek, senor? Nothing. I just had a hunch and I was wrong. Sorry. Good night. Good night. Made a wrong guess. It wasn't there. Oh, I knew it wouldn't be. Jerry, I'm frightened. Let's give it up and get out of here. Yeah, guess we might as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you've done all this for me. Spent your money and risked your life. Oh, that's all right. Buying the ranch was just a gamble. Those fellows were too smart for me. They got what they came for. I beg your pardon, sir, but, but I... I don't think they did. You're not going to tell me you think a ghost took it. Well, I don't know anything about a ghost, sir, but whoever took the picture is going to be disappointed. What are you driving at? Well, you see, sir, I sort of anticipated this happening, so I examined the picture myself. I found this hidden in the frame. What did you intend to do with this? Well... I sort of intended to sell you out, sir, but I, I found I couldn't go through with it. I see. Thanks, Eddie. Full moon. Yeah, I took the liberty of looking that up, too, sir. There'd be a full moon a week from tonight. A week from tonight, eh? I wonder... on the wrong side. Get around on the left and he'll stand. Is that so, sir? Of course. Oh, thank you, sir. Whoa, <laughs> Amazing, sir. I didn't know an horse knew which was his left side, sir. Uh, when Miss Moore wakes up, tell her I've gone to town to see the sheriff. Very good, sir. Trouble. Right. We found the compartment in the picture frame where the chart probably was hidden. But Wayne had beat us to it. The compartment was empty. Secrets, eh? I do all the dirty work. Fighting, ghost riding, but I ain't told nothing. You're paid for what you do, not for what you know. Is that so? Well, there's one man that'll pay me for what I know. Yes? And who is that man? Jerry Lane. Ever hear of him? I'm afraid Tex is no longer useful to us. I was just thinking the same thing. See you at the ranch? Perhaps. I'll see the sheriff.
was it, man? I didn't get a good look at him. I'm not going to leave you. Save your breath. Let's stop this blood. Hey, Sheriff! You know this fellow Lane that bought the Moore place? What about him? I just saw him shoot Tex. Tex was just riding along peaceable like. He came out of the rocks and downed him with the first shot. Sheriff, Lane threatened to get Tex after they had that fight. He'll probably head for his place. He don't know we've seen him. Let's go. Well, follow me, Archer, with the very spot. Right. If you got anything to say, you better start talking. Lane, I was hired to beat you up by... by... Yes, you were hired by... No, I was just coming up to you, Sheriff. This is murder. Yeah. So I heard. You don't think I shot him? He was shot from ambush from those rocks. Is this the man you saw, Mark? That's him. He rode out of those rocks and shot Tex out of the saddle. That's a lie. I was 200 yards away when the shot was fired. I heard you threaten that man, but I didn't think you'd shoot him when he was unarmed. No use, Lane. There's a shot fired out of this gun. Sure there is. I took a shot at the killer as he rode off. Who's this man that accuses me? Mark Graydon, my foreman. Oh, so he's your foreman, is he? And he's also a buyer of fine old oil paintings in his spare time. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. But Mark's got good eyes, and if he says you did the shooting, it's mighty certain you did. All right, Sheriff. This is a frame-up. I guess I'll have to prove that in court. Bring a handcuff along. I reckon there's enough of us to ride herd on you. Shorty, get his horse. Dearborn, take Tex into town. Sure. I'll have a tough time proving my innocence if you put me in jail. The only way I can get the guilty man is to be free myself. I 
clean getaway. You should have let me get him in the water. You're just a little bit anxious, ain't you? I want that fellow alive. Shorty, you circle around and see if you can pick up his trail. I'll head for the ranch in case he goes home. Any luck? I couldn't find a trace of him. We'll try the house. Well? Well, you ain't come yet, Miss Jean. I've been watching the road. Oh, I'm frightened, Eddie. If anything should happen to Jerry, he's into all this on my account. And he has that chart in his pocket that those men want. That's right, Miss. I was worried about Mr. Lane, so I took the liberty of... You, you what? Rifled his pockets, miss. I have the chart. Put it away, Eddie. Someone's coming. Morning, Miss Moore. Where's Lane? I don't know. Why? What's happened, Sheriff? Why do you want Mr. Lane? You two boys search the house. The rest of you fellas look the barns over. What does this mean, Sheriff? Lane's wanted for murder. Murder? My word. Senor. Senor. The very part you want, the English lucky has it. I have seen it, senor. Rosas. No, it's a clear case. He threatened the man, and I found him standing over the body. Incredible. I'm leaving one of my men for your protection, Miss Moore. I know why you're leaving him. It's very thoughtful of you. Good morning. Officer is walking back and forth, just waiting to pounce on Jerry if he comes. Well, the Bobby can't have miss. That's his job. Oh, I don't care. I wish something would happen to him. There's Deputy Barnes. Get him first. Just another coyote, miss. Just sit down. Sit down, miss, and, and listen to this. I have something nice I want you to hear.
Brandon. Mr. Lane isn't here. We know that. You will not see Lane again. We'll just ask your English friend to hand over the paper he took from the frame of Hiram Moore's picture. The, the, the paper? The, why, my, my dear Ch 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 Chappie, I, I know nothing about a paper. You must be m mad, mad. Enough of that. Hand it over. Give it to him, Eddie. But there are four of them in there, and you ain't on. You tell the sheriff if I'm not here to look for me at the Tower Rocks. That's clear enough. It means the Tower Rocks. And the moon's full enough now for our purpose. What are you going to do with them? Tie them up. Drop that gun, Graydon. So here we are, all the picture buyers. And Mr. Brandon. I'll have a look at that map. One of you four killed Tex. I'm going to find out which one before I'm through with you. Get the hardware ready. Hardware, sir? Oh, you mean their gun, sir? <laughs> right you are, sir. Right, sir. Right.
don't look as old that Lane needed any help. Howard, Dearborn, take care of those two fellas. Up, Pull me up. Who killed us? Talk fast. In ten seconds, you'll drop. Time's up. Who killed Tex? I did. I did. That's enough, Lane. Haul him up. Well, look who's here. Help him, boys. Finance a small war without that loot, sir. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Hiram Moore's granddaughter. Don't talk nonsense. You bought the place, didn't you? I didn't buy a half million in gold, did I? Yes, your agreement was for the ranch and all that went with it. A big pardon, sir, and Miss Jean, but I'd somehow come to the conclusion that you were going to uh, uh, pool your resources. Well? Well, yourself, fella. 